Virginia's home food processing operations business. Now, if you're looking to do a food business from home and you're in Virginia, cottage food laws are one thing. This law is a totally another level. The home food processing operation allows for unrestricted, very unrestricted food businesses at their homes. And I'm actually going to give you a walkthrough of what you can make, how much this costs and everything else in between. Stick with me through this video. If you're in Virginia, do you want to start a food business from home, but not under the cottage food laws, but under their home processing operation, you're going to want to check this out. All right, welcome back to Cottage Foods Laws. This is YouTube's premier food entrepreneur channel dedicated to everyone like you, the home-based food entrepreneur who needs guidance, direction, and resources to get up and running. This channel is run by me, Damian Roberti. I am a food entrepreneur with my wife, Sylvia. We've been online now for almost 14 years with our e-commerce businesses. We operate our commercial kitchen. I've also run Italian bakeries. We've sold paninis, gelato. We made everything from pastries, cookies, and everything in between. And I've even sold food from home when I first started out uh, locally where I am. So I know what I'm talking about. I want to give you the tips and pointers on how this works. So, all right, let's break this down. All right, so Virginia actually stands out when it comes to home-based food entrepreneurship. It's actually unlike nearly every other state where there are a strict regulations about using commercial kitchens for food processing. Virginia plays it cool. They've actually set up their food regulations in a way that doesn't discriminate between the using of a home kitchen and a commercial one. The catch? Well, the Department of Agriculture is the one that draws the line. So now, even though Virginia is pretty lax about the whole operation, starting up is not exactly a walk in the park, though. Compared to the more straightforward cottage food laws in other states, Virginia's setup process for this particular type is a bit more involved. However, there is a silver lining. The state has a cottage food law that exempts certain small-scale producers from the rigors of actually setting up a kitchen and inspections. Now, keep in mind, under this framework, though, producers can sell their goods pretty much anywhere directly to consumers or through third-party vendors, as long as they're not dealing with meat products, okay? So keep that in mind. If you have a meat item, that's off the table. Uh, the setup involves a little bit of navigating through a detailed application process, though, possibly undergoing a kitchen inspection, and for those dealing with acidified foods, some required training sessions might be also needed. And there is a $40 annual fee for the privilege of this type of a business. Considering, though, doing this type of business is a low overhead and unique opportunity in Virginia, it offers compared to a restrictive environment in most other states. So remember, this is the Virginia Home Food Processing Operation. Let's break this down, guys. So I'm going to go through, number one, selling. I'm going to tell you where you can sell and where you can't. Now, <clears throat> like I mentioned before, this is not cottage food. I have another video here on my channel specifically about the cottage food end of it, but this is totally different. You can do it at events. You can sell online. You can sell at roadside stands, restaurants, farmer's markets. Obviously, you could sell directly from your home if you want people to pick it up. If you're comfortable with that, you can do that. You can sell to retail stores. That is huge, guys, huge. Um, also, the services, so delivery, home pickup, or mail order. So obviously, mail order and home pickup. If you are selling this product on, online and within a state, you are able to deliver it directly to the person. Uh, that's also really big as well. Now, the one thing that's still kind of prohibited, though, is catering. That is a whole other one. As a matter of fact, I'm actually getting ready to launch a brand new YouTube channel all about catering. And I'll have a lot of videos there for state-specific information. But catering in Virginia from home, eh, that's a no-no still. All right. So you're probably wondering, what kind of foods can you make? Now, I'm going to go through a list. And to be honest with you, this list is gigantic. Okay? But re re remember, each of these items you can make anywhere from 20, 30, 2 dozen, 3 dozen different variations. It's endless. Number one, bagels, wedding cakes, waffles, rolls, sweetbreads, muffins and biscuits, cupcakes, Cakes, bread, if you like, bread, you can do breads, brownies, cookies, donuts, some perishable baked goods, actually. Uh, the only thing about that with the perishable baked goods, um, it includes baked goods, which actually may have to require refrigeration, like a cream pie or something like a custard or cakes that have cream fillings and such. Uh, scones, waffles as well, you can do crepes. I don't know if I mentioned uh, macarons, you can do also macarons as well. That's just a portion of the baked goods that you can do. Now, keep in mind, all of these, like, for instance, cookies. There's literally an infinite amount of cookies that you can make with this, okay? There's a ton of wedding cakes. You want to do wedding cakes? You can do that in Virginia under this process. Next up, the category is candies. You can do things like fudge, cotton candy. By the way, that's a hugely profitable item. Cotton candy, buttercream frostings, candies, brittles, chocolate, lollipops. Some of the condiments you can do are like honeys, salsa. Well, that's even, that's interesting to know. You can do pickles, mustards, ketchups, oils that are infused even if you want. 
um, vinegars, uh, nut butters. Nut butters are huge, by the way, hugely profitable. Uh, again, there's so many variations of each of these things I'm telling you. Salsa, there's limitless amounts of variations, okay? So this list is really big and it gives Virginia a huge opportunity. Uh, dry goods, things like pasta noodles, you know, dried vegetables, mixes, herbs, coffee beans, dried fruit, tea leaves, spices, and seasonings. Oh, that's another one. That's a huge one. You can create a huge business with spices and seasoning. The market is always, always much, much bigger than you think. Trust me. Next one. You've got different like carbonated drinks. Kombucha, which is, that's actually hard boiled eggs as well. Extracts, fermented foods. Uh, kombucha, I didn't realize they could do that. That's pretty impressive. Um, that's a big, big market. Then you have pastries, things like uh, danishes, pies. Uh, empanadas, tamales, uh, cones, churros, you can do acidified foods, fruit butters, applesauce, jams and jellies, marmalades, chutneys, the list goes on, guys. These are all, again, under Virginia's food home food processing operation uh, permit. And again, I'm going to go over a little bit of what's involved with the inspection and all that other good stuff. Next up, you've got snacks, things like uh, nuts and seeds. The nuts, nut business, nut industry is gigantic. Starting one from home, no brainer. Kettle corn, granola, crackers and pretzels, caramel corn, popcorn, vegetable chips, marshmallows, uh, chocolate covered fruits. Now, the only thing that's not, not allowed, prohibited, is meat jerkies, like beef jerkies or chicken jerky or stuff, fish jerky. That, unfortunately, is a no. You still can't do that. Now, the other thing is the, some of the limitations. Now, there's no sales limit, by the way. You can sell as much as you want from your house, which is amazing. Pet restrictions. Now, you cannot have pets in your kitchen while you are making these products. And of course, smoking is not recommended. It's not allowed to be smoking as well. But those are two not really big things. I mean, if you happen to be a smoker, just don't smoke while you're preparing these products. Um, if you have pets, just put them in the other room, obviously. Okay, let's get to the business aspect of this. So the application process. Now, this is the application process. For the home food processing operation, it has a handful of requirements. Number one, business information. The application for this would include a number of different requirements. Kitchen and storage area diagram. Now, you do have to draw out your kitchen. Now, remember, like I said, the process to get this is a little tedious. But once you're done, you're done. Okay? Uh, information sheets for each product, which would be like your recipe and your process to make it. Okay? Uh, distribution plan. How are you going to distribute it? Are you going to be selling to retail? They just want to know, hey, okay, I'm going to sell at retail stores, grocery stores. Okay, that's fine. Labels for each product. List of sources for all ingredients. This is very unique. A lot of uh, home-based food businesses in the States don't require that. Next up, kitchen inspection. Yes, after submitting your application, an inspector will come to inspect your home. You cannot start your business until the kitchen has been approved by the local authorities in regards to that. Now, your business will be charged, yes, it does have an annual inspection fee, which is $40, regardless of whether the inspector comes uh, to your home or not. Sometimes they just don't schedule it out, so you may not get one, but every year it's $40. Contact your zoning office to get approval to operate your home business, so the zoning is very important as well. So next up, the acidified food process approval. So if you make acidified foods, these are like salsas, sauces or pickles, or items containing garlic and oil. The production process for these is actually going to uh, need to have an approval by the local authorities for that. Now, if you're operating your kitchen from a well, a lot of country, or a lot of counties and cities are going to require that to be inspected as well. <laughs> so what goes on the label, Damien? Well, you need to have your allergens. Uh, you need to make sure your label has allergens. Things like milk, eggs, peanuts, tree nuts, wheat, and soy must be included on the label itself. Business address. You cannot use a P.O. box. So your home address is your business address in Virginia. The name of your business. So if it's, you know, Damien's Cake Company, you need to have the name of the business on there. Ingredients from most used to least, make sure your ingredients are on there. So, you know, a cake would be obviously flour, eggs, milk, and sugar, these types of things. But make sure you put it in the, the, the highest to most least used. Net amount. So if you're selling a product by weight, for instance, you know, if you're doing two dozen cookies, you need to make sure it says 24 cookies. If you're selling granola, you know, make sure it says 16 ounces of one pound, right? So that's the net weight. Lastly, the product name, you know, if it's a chocolate chip cookie or if it's peanut butter cookies or something to that effect, make sure you have that on there as well. So all in all, that is a rundown of what the labeling requirements are. Some of the business aspects are sales limitations, uh, the foods and the types of foods you can sell. Okay. Now keep in mind, <clears throat> You definitely want to do a little bit of research on what you want to make and what. Now, remember, by the way, you're not limited to one of these things. If you're great at making, you know, certain types of cakes, but you want to make candies and then some nut butters, 
that's the great thing about Virginia's uh, law under this specific one being the uh, home food processing operation is that you have an opportunity to make all of those if you want. Okay. Just remember, also keep track of all your expenditures. If you make a profit, that's going to be income. Make sure you bring that to your tax accountant. So if you have any questions about Virginia home food processing operation, let me know down below. If you're actually taking advantage of this and it's working for you, let our other subscribers know how is it working? Is it, are you making any money doing it? What are you selling specifically? What is it you're looking to sell? And be sure to check out these resources here. I'll see you in our next video.